Every year, thousands of pilgrims journey to Uganda at a place known as Namugongo, on the outskirts of the country's capital Kampala, to pray at the site of martyrdom for 33 Christian converts who were killed in the late 19th century. The country has set aside this day as a national day in memory of the indomitable spirit of the martyrs faced with religious persecution. This school, named after the 14-year-old Saint Kizito, the youngest of the martyrs, while camping out on the eve of the Day of the Martyrs, retraces the story of the martyrs from martyrdom to glory. Now, friends, it seems we are coming to the end of our camping and it has quite been good to me. But I, feel, I suggest we can have another day tomorrow, since it's a public holiday. Yes. Yes. And I think you very well know it's Matters Day tomorrow. Is there any question? Excuse me, Master. Yes, please. What is the Uganda <coughs> Matters Day all about? Oh, very good question. Uganda Matters Day all about. That's a very good question. I'm going to give you an answer. Is there any other before I answer that one? Our school was named after St. Chizito. Mm -hmm. Who was St. Chizito? Those are very two good questions. I'm going to begin with the first, then I'll go to the second. Our first friend asked us about Matters Day. Now, Matters Day is a day that we always celebrate every year annually in remembrance of the people who died for the faith of Christianity. Many people were executed in the days of Kabaka Mwanga under his orders because they refused to deny Christianity. Now many of them who were excluded in Namgongo, I mean the majority of them were in Namgongo, though many were excluded in different parts of the country. And every 3rd June, we celebrate that day, remember it's for those people. Now the second question was about St. Chizito. Now Chizito was the youngest of all the martyrs, born in 1872 and died in 1886, making 14 years. So you can imagine how a young 14-year boy is so brave to give in his life for a faith of Christianity. So the proprietors of this school probably chose to use that name that they can build a strong faith within the children that pass through this institution of St. Chizito and they named it St. Chizito High School. Found in Namgongo. Is there any other question before we go on? Uh, is in the story of the Uganda matters a myth? Are there any true accounts that were captured in written or oral information that exist to about the Uganda matters? Actually, we have a lot of accounts which we have captured, both in newspapers, books, and oral stories told to us by our elders. Missionaries did put down some of these chilling stories in articles and up to date which still exist. Um, for example, I can read for you some of the stories. Master, I read them. A reader? Yes. Fine. According to this book, which was written by Father Sekade, uh, it was the year 1885, and Balikudembe was attending to his hailing master who dies in his hands. The death of Mutesa brought a dark cloud over Buganda. The people grieved for a monarch that had started out as a despot in the early years of his 24-year-old reign, but had turned around to liberalize and modernize his kingdom in the latter stage of his rule. Kabuza aliwa. Chituka. Mbade mba tumye mwami. Ngoba tumye wakaya zimbida. Mbade mba tumye wa mwami sesiri ya. Habana aduwa inti mwade watulumbu yosa wazino. 
The death of a Kabaka was a very unusual event in Buganda. It therefore involved a complex procedure and activity surrounding the burial and succession to the throne. Two important chiefs, the Kasuju and the Katikiro, were at the forefront of this ritual. The Kasuji rounded up all the princes and princesses and proceeded to perform all culture rituals due. On the other hand, the Katikiro and some major chiefs presided Very over the burial of the deceased Kabaka and selected the new one. My master is gone. Woman, shut up. You mean I just quell babies? You never seem to see when an opportunity avails itself. Who is now seen enough to preside the succession other than me? I'm however undecided between Bamweyana and Mwang. I've always thought you favored Kalima. Kalima? The one who shot his brother dead. The one who found plucking out the eyes of a rat. It's too dangerous. I'm more inclined to Mwang. Bamweyana. He can't be influenced by other chips. More inclined to Mwanga. He's docile but can be guided by a serious chief who knows what he wants. But isn't being a particular enough for you? Isn't that the highest officer Mokopi can attain in Uganda? Oh, sweet. God! God! One by seven. Son, my chief, you drop. The great chick is me and decide the hair as is in the custom. Good. And I'll preside over the succession as custom demands. Chips. But Sekawaka Mutesa, our dearest departed king, had willed Mwanga to inherit his throne. Mm -hmm. yes. no. Who is grumbling? No. Who is grumbling? Who is grumbling? I, his most loyal servant. How can I defy his wish, even in death? Shhh! Uwe wa, kamara wena, chivenga wote seza. Hmm. Since all that little matter of ways to succeed, the throne is resolved. Let's turn into the urgent one of burying our departed one. Bring in Makai the missionary, who will make for us the tombs and coffins for burying our king. So what we do? The young teenage Mwanga was coronated the Kabaka of Buganda, succeeding to the throne of his modernizing father, Mokabia Mutesa, and Suna, his grandfather. Two monarchs who had navigated precariously but successfully against the evading influences of a foreign people, the Arabs and the Europeans. Mukasa, who had been Mutesa's Katikiro, led the Baganda to pledge loyalty to the new Kabaka. <laughs> Wangu ana isa masajja. Fugenza ndo kama jajo eba koledo. 
Zamu sajo mukasa, uwa musu, onda biranga dala. Tuli taba la fena, hera, wari gua, wendi gua. Banjuli la kabaka mwe, mwango woku biri. Saba saja kabaka wangale kuna mudono li yaba jajabe. Mwanga's coronation, like all royal festivities, was a joyous occasion. All the Baganda celebrated the ascension to the throne of the new king who seemed jovial and well-meaning. Buganda, which had been at its tenter hooks during the last period of the ailing Kabaka, seemed to recover its peace. <laughs> The white missionaries who had relocated to the neighboring southern chiefdoms in Tanganyika in the previous regime were called back with the new Kabaka promising them a peaceful and uninterrupted stay in his country. The white missionaries who had been categorized as the Wafaransa for the Catholics and the Wangereza for the Protestants, according to their origins, continued their mission of evangelizing the local Baganda. For the Christian faith, it was an African renaissance of a time of great theological debate, especially regarding which was the true Christian belief of Jesus, Catholicism or Anglicanism. Balikudembe, the major domo, was a fanatic oh, Catholic. Is it well, he at well, one time huh? engaged it's the well, Protestant and Anglican yeah, Mackay well on the true Christian and doctrine. About our new king. His war too. He continues to look for very bloody activities, although he wonders why we do not worship the same religion. The king is right. What parallel did his fellow puppets are telling is wrong. God does not need an interceder. He deals directly with us. We do not need to take our confessions to a priest in order to get approval of the Pope to do what God requires from all of us to do. Bonamake, you have a king where you come from, not so? Yes. Why? Isn't he the protector of this your religion? Yes. And here in Uganda, don't you have a king? Yes, you do. What's their role? To lead the Baganda. Well, these people act in the name of the Lord. The Lord anointed them to lead his will in this world. And below the Kavaka are his ministers, the Katikilo and the chiefs. A peasant Muganda does not need to take his request direct to the king. It passes through hierarchies. Don't you have church leaders in your religion? Yes, we have the lay readers, the bishops and the priests. That's exactly the point. We need interceders and hierarchies everywhere. Well, Mbozi Teba Ankade, my master awaits me. The Baganda Christian converts, locally known as the readers, continued to perform their duties at the Kabaka's court while embracing the new faith. Mwanga did not seem to mind and was cozy with some like Balikudembe, who he allowed to openly practice and discuss their new faith, although he himself was skeptical about the obvious lack of agreement between Mackay, the Anglican leader, and Pierre Laudel, who was locally known as Mapera of the Catholic faith. Chesinza kuvaa nonga siku gambia. Jena vade ntamre tamrileo kumachia. Jena sanzo no mzungu vaita makei. Nga mbuze evi huzo, kabaka aliatia. Nange jena vade neva mne mbuza. Tigocho gamba jova, temuina kabaka. 
chance is a monte bamina. Or in a younger and new moza. Ntigocho gamba, a woman with mukopi. Mwanga had particularly a soft spot for Balikudembe, who kept his office as the major domo. This was a very powerful position at the king's court. In turn, this attracted the suspicion of the powerful Katikiro Mukasa and drew his permanent enmity. Echa bibiria. Echi gamba anti. Teri bufuzi. Butaveri katonda. Echi tegeza. Tine aisaba sajia. Uweleza katonda. Aisaba sajia. Aisaba kugenda. My man. What are my house? You may go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mukas, do you hear them? Do you see them? Hmm. Eh. That the foreign religion are the ones that profess the truth? What truth is that? Which is contested like that? Mm -mm. And your brother Bali Kudembe, he opposes one and is a fanatic of the other. What a contradiction! I think that is hypocrisy. People like that have a bearing of a double edged sword. Oh, Mukasa, you are a most mysterious man. For a moment, you almost had me. What trap have you laid for me in that gift? What do you want? It is from the Sultan of Zanzibar. It came in last night with a messenger. He is awaiting for your permission to come along with the rest of the Sultan's other gifts. I chose this particular one to highlight the importance of silencing those who do not know who truly their leaders are. He now tells me that the new Kabaka likes our work. So he does seven. My worries is his age. He's young. Now he has power and wealth. Those three things are the most corrupting influence. Maka is young. That's how a Kabaka should be. Powerful and rich. And he should wield that power. But I'm sure Mwanga is not going to be as harsh as his father father. He is a modern Kabaka. He has read and heard of our Lord's work. He's all praises to the missionaries. Mwanga seems to be so unlike his father. Bazekit, things change. Things change. If there is evil in the wind, let our Holy Father deliver us from evil. Mackay continued to harbor fear and distrust of the new Kabaka. At one time, the Kabaka had rebuked Mackay for transgressing court etiquette at his palace, in an incident Mackay found to be rather minor, he personally considered the young Kabaka rather vain. Mackay nevertheless continued his crusade for the Anglican faith. He aggressively pushed for his cause at the Kabaka's court, the Katikiro, and other important chiefs of the kingdom. Sabasaj, it's written that alcohol and women can lead to the destruction of a king. <laughs> oh, Marke, what do you imply there? Are you suggesting that I should not nudge myself? And that I should divorce my wives? <laughs> Marke, you are pissed at me now. 
You are asking for impossible demands. Beware. You may displease me. I fear. Manga might announce Bali could be a ticket in my place. Neda nawe. Manga cannot do that to you. Akwa gala nyo. The ways of the Kamaka are unpredictable. So, Maka is passing by and he has brought a gift for you. Hmm. The Nasha in me. The friend is Okulawa. How is the mission? Mm. What could have brought you here? The Kabaka has no enthusiasm of learning as he used to do before he became a Kabaka. Of course. The Kabaka is no longer an idol prince. He has duties to perform for his people and kingdom. But David and Solomon of the Good Book, they are kings also. But they never forsook their Lord. Which Lord? Chivuko Mukasa. Not any of those. Those are false gods. Yeah. I mean the Almighty One. You mean Atonda Wewotonda? Yes. To whom your previous master wished to follow. To whom he wrote us to come and teach you people about. Makai. If you were not here at the favor of our beloved Kabaka, I would have shown you what is done. To those who are insolent to our Kabaka and to our noble traditions. We never invited you here to teach us your religion. But to make guns. Guns as many as the grass. God! God! Shomakai out. He's tired. In the meantime, the Kabaka who loved water sport issued an edict for the digging of a lake near his palace. This work was entrusted to Kalori Ranga, a young energetic page who had earned the Kabaka's favor when he distinguished himself in a wrestling match. The young Karoli carried out his duty with a zeal that made serious enemies for him. One of them was Senkole, the keeper of the sacred fire. And why should they? They are not peasants, are they? The king's edict states that this work knows no chief, knows no peasant. <laughs> then the Katikra ought to be at the digging, especially the soggy parts. Tell me, where is Mukwenda? Where is Sechiwobo? And where is Kangao? Tell me, where are they? Then, are you proclaiming a new edict? Are you? Unless I forgot you're a chief. <laughs> and I'm not here to bandy words with just a mere wrestler. Wrestler? Yes. A wrestler? A wrestler. And then you're going to the wrestler in me. Gods, take him to the deepest part of the digging pit. Tomorrow. Luanga, where are you? I've come to present my reports about this work to the Kabaka. Tell me, how did it go? It went in well, apart from the little incident with the chief of sacred fire. You mean Senkole? Yes, that old man. He arrived late at work and seemed unprepared to do anything. He wanted to be treated like a chief at work. My brother, don't be brash. These are elderly chiefs, and some of them can be very unforgiving, and there is no limit on the schemes they can come up with. A sacred fire knows no fiercer fire than a vengeful chief with an opportunity to avenge. I'm not telling you to disobey your kabaka, but treat carefully. And I think I must have a summon at the mission house to all of you young brethren on this challenging weight that comes with chiefly office.
you all seem to be sad. What might be the cause of this? Katikiro, you should have seen the way St. Kolo was humiliated by that upstart Mujas, who was tasked with digging the lake. Imagine. Who is that? The one that got office because he was a great wrestler. And that Bari Kudembe's boy. The one who goes to Mapera's mission to pray. Yes. For sure, Sebo, you are right. They don't respect us old chiefs. They don't respect our traditions. How can a mere boy push a chief into manure? What? Mm. He practically dragged him to the deepest part of the pit and forced him to scoop mud using his bare hands. While his servant searched, poor Saint Kole doesn't even have the guts to come to this meeting. He's burying his face in shame and his chiefly heart. That scheming devil. There is no scheming that, sir. Just an impulsive action of someone new to power. The young boy and his friends are drunk with power. No. Not him at all. Then who could it be, sir, if not Luanga? That one is a mere bead in a trinket. The architect of all this is Bari Kudembe. What? what? Bari Kudembe. I can see his hand working this. Isn't he the one who advocated for young men to take up positions at the enthronement of the Kabaka? Now think of that. You are right. He particularly wanted those who read and pray with the missionaries. In fact, he had said that the ways of our sisters have no great meaning in them. Listen. Leave this to me. <laughs> 